A certain woman who had received some favors from a celebrated Jesuit violated the principles of honor. When out of dread and shame she determined upon taking her life, she made known her terrible intention to the priest. The Jesuit used every argument to pursue her, utterly blinded by shame and fear. However, the woman was so possessed by the temptation that the missioner's words had no effect at all. Finally, he administered his reserved coup. At least, he said in a lowered voice, at least you will do one little thing for me. Let me give you the scapula and then promise me that you will not take it off. And for a moment, the sinner hesitated, and then she replied, I will promise you, Father, I could not refuse one who has been so kind to me. As she left, wearing the scapula of Our Lady, the priest smiled inwardly and said, My friend, I have you now. Try as you may to take your life, you shall not succeed. Haunted by the temptation, the poor woman actually did go to the river and throw herself into its waters. And she was rescued. The next day she tried again. Again someone saw her fall into the water and again she was unwillingly dragged from the river. This time a severe illness followed. As she lay between life and death, still wearing that miraculous scapula, grace touched her soul and she realized the horror of what she had been about to do. The priest found after her recovery that in the place of an abandoned sinner was a repentant saint. Yesterday we celebrated the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and I don't want neglect to talk about this important feast. The feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel has its name from Mount Carmel in Palestine, where some hermits lived, who afterwards formed themselves into an order and were called the Brothers of Mount Carmel, or the Carmelites. As this feast was celebrated first by the Carmelites and afterwards spread through them over the entire church, therefore it is called the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And it's, it is the feast of the brown scapula, or which is also called the, the garment of heaven which all of us wear, I hope. The origin of the brown scapula is this. At a time when the Carmelite order was undergoing severe persecution at the hands of the Turks, there lived in England a pious man of noble origin by the name of Simon Stock. When only 12 years of age, he retired in the, into solitude, where a tree served him for a dwelling place. From this he was called Simon Stock. When the Carmelites came to England, he entered their community and in his old age became superior general of the order. 
and the order at that time being apparently near its dissolution, he had recourse to prayer and he prayed much in order to save the order. On the evening of July 16th, in 1251, our Lady, in answer to his prayer to avert the tribulation of the order, assured him of her protection, at the same time handing him a scapula with the words, Receive, dear son, the scapula of thy order as a prerogative for thyself and for all the children of Carmel, as a particular sign of my confraternity, as a pledge of an eternal peace which I contract with you. This is the sign of salvation, a protection in dangers. He who invested with this habit, habit piously dies, will not be cast into everlasting fires. And Pope Honorius confirmed the scapula and gave Simon a letter to all the bishops in which he commanded them to protect and propagate the order of the Carmelites in the scapula. A numberless people wore the habit, the scapula of Mary, truly called the habit, the garment of heaven. Many people wore it, popes, cardinals, emperors and kings lived and died in it. And the scapula is powerful in all our corporal necessities and dangers. There was a certain man received at the siege of Montpellier in France two balls in his breast, and he reeled but did not fall. They hastened to undress him in order to find the two balls, and behold, they were found flattened on a scapula. And the scapula is most powerful and efficacious in all our spiritual necessities. Back to Simon Stock, whilst Simon Stock was still living, a certain nobleman named Walter, who had led a very dissolute life, was wounded in a duel and was about to die in despair. Hearing this, the zealous general of the order hastened to him and found him gnashing his knee, his teeth, with rage, with despair in his heart, blasphemies in his mouth, and near death. He prayed for him and let the scapula upon him, and the sick man immediately returned to his senses, bewailed his sins, and died in peace after having received the sacraments with great devotion. And the history of the scapula teaches us that whenever there is tribulation, whenever there is problems, whenever there are many and big crosses to carry, God is near to assist us in all our tribulations, in all our crosses, and in all our problems. And so today, in the, with the big cross, in this big crisis of the Church, God will assist us in our necessities, in our crosses and problems, if we ask him for it. God gave and gives many graces to those 
who put confidence in the scapuli, in the garment of heaven, and wear it with pious intentions and sentiments. And it is certain that Christians, Catholics, who wear the scapuli in a devout frame of mind, will be protected by the Blessed Virgin in a particular manner, and that they will receive through her intercession many, many graces in life and death. And parents have to make sure that their children don't take off their scapulier. Wear the scapulier and endeavor to be true children of Mary, that you may always enjoy her protection and have the happiness hereafter of saluting her as you, Mother, in heaven. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.